Hi everyone and welcome back the course with the interesting introduction to AI in gaming that we watched in the previous video we will transition and start learning a couple of new data structures to use in our codes that will help us organize manipulate and handle data up until now we have only been dealing with single variables variables that have a single value assigned to them whether it's an integer number or a string each variable we created had only one item but what if we want to group data together and create more advanced structures such as list of numbers for a phone book or list of items for a shopping list in this class we will look at lists tuples and dictionaries in python and understand the difference between each one and how to code and implement them in our codes. Let's start with lists. Lists in Python are data structures that we use to collect any type or number of variables and objects. They are one of the most used data structures in Python and that's because of how flexible and dynamic they can be. We will now look at their characteristics and how to implement them in Python. List elements are ordered. This means that when the list is created, the order in which the items are inserted to it is maintained as long as the list exists. Lists behave very similar to strings, as you are going to see in the next few examples. If two lists have the same items but in different order, then those two lists are not the same. Let's create two lists. In this example, we create the list and populate them at the same time. Each item in that list exists in this specific order. List can be accessed by their index. The list index starts from zero for the first item in that list. And every item in that list can be accessed using its index, which is its order in that list. List underscore A index this code here allows you to access any element in the list by choosing its index as you can see. In our example, the last print statement first retrieves the element with index 5 from list underscore a, then adds 1 to it. What do you think the result would be for the following two codes? For the first print line, the code will retrieve the third element in the list that holds the index 2, which is number 13, then add 1 to it. For the second print line, the code will throw an error as index 6 is out of range as you can see. You can also index a list using negative indexing as well. This means that you are indexing the list from its end as it shows in this example. You can specify a range as an index to retrieve multiple items from the list using the slicing technique as you can see. Create a new list and assign these values to it as it shows. List can contain any arbitrary objects. A list is not restricted to have one type for all of its items. Each item in the list can be of a different type. Lists can also host complex objects, such as functions, class objects, and even other lists. They can also contain duplicates as we can see. Lists can be nested. There is no limit on how many lists you can have within other lists but it's important to carefully understand your structure in order not to get confused. As you can see, list underscore C contains list underscore A in its index 2. In the print statement, we are printing the item with index 3 in list underscore A, which is located in the second index of list C. This is a simple example of nested lists. We can use this to our advantage 
in many scenarios such as creating two or three-dimensional lists. Lists are immutable data structures. Once a list is created, you can modify the list in every possible way. You can move, add, delete, and shift its items. We will practice those operations through examples and challenges in this class. The next example will show us some of the functions that are associated with lists. You can look up a list of all the available functions by visiting this website. Let's practice few of these functions. The append method adds a single item to the end of the list. The pop method removes the item at the given index from the list and returns the removed item. The insert method inserts an element to the list at the specified index. We can use the count function to count how many times a given object occurs in a list, just like what we did in strings. The final and very beneficial characteristic of lists is that they are dynamic. This means that you do not need to set the size of the list when it's first defined. The list can grow and shrink as you need to. In this example, we are creating an empty list then we are manipulating with its elements using the functions we saw earlier. Now let's practice lists with this challenge. Create a list called grocery underscore items and add five different items to it. Create a list called prices and add the price of every item in list grocery underscore items in order. Print every item next to its price. Remove three items from both lists, then add two new items from the start locations of the lists. You can pause the video and try to do it yourself. That sums up our first data structure of this class. We will now move on to our second structure type, which are tuples. Tuples are identical to lists, except in two ways. Tuples are immutable, which means that they cannot be modified in any way once they are created. And the second difference is in their definition syntax. A tuple is created using parentheses, instead of square brackets, but it's important to know that they are still accessed using square brackets as you can see in this example.
Now you might ask, why would we use a tuple if we cannot edit it at all? Well, there are several benefits to having such a structure. Sometimes you want to create data that cannot be modified through your code. Using tuple in this case will ensure that and will protect your data from accidental modifications. From a performance point of view, program execution is faster when dealing with tuples than when dealing with lists. And finally, some data structures such as dictionaries require immutable objects as one of their components. Hence, that component can be a tuple. That's all for this video. You can practice and look up different functions that can be applied to lists and tuples. But for now, we will move on to the next video to cover dictionaries. See you then.